we would joke back and forth about like not wanting to really run marathon distances anymore. When you do anything and, and you're doing it competitively, like obviously I'm not competing to win a marathon, but training for me is very much about like progress. And so when I went into the marathon last year and had a, like a 26 week build up, had some shit happen and then come race day, have a complete like meltdown. It was just one of those things where as soon as the race ended for me, I knew I was coming back. I just felt that like I had a lot of unfinished time left in me for this distance and this marathon, and New York City Marathon specifically. So I knew that coming back this year, refocus, we'll have about 2,000 miles more on my legs in between last year and this year. Working with a coach for the training cycle this year, cutting it down from 18 weeks of building to 16 weeks of building this year. You take everything you learn from that and you try to apply it just to be smarter and train a little bit better for myself specifically. But I feel really good about where our training is at. We're seven, eight weeks out right now. Uh, how many weeks are you guys doing this? I think this is week, I was just talking to them, I think 12 or 14. It hasn't been like that long, but I've, I just try to be consistent. Yeah, every yeah. single week and then New people like rotate in, people away for the summer. And so you kind of always have new people here and it's nice because New York's like a business hub. So you'll have people from like other countries in for work and then they stop in to run, which is, that's my favorite part. Cause you end up meeting so many cool people. All right, you guys ready? Yeah. Let's head on in. What's up? How are you? You running? Yeah. Hell yeah. How you doing? No way. I love running into people. How are you? Are you ripping one right now? Am I slowing you up? Don't let me slow you up. Dude, I don't think I could ever slow you up. <laughs> All right, I got a mile left. Yeah? Uh, nine minute pace. So probably too slow for you. You're coming around that corner like a freight train. Yeah, well I get too antsy and then I'm like, wow, this is that <laughs> talked about it, but we're finalizing like a pop-up October 21 and 22. Uh, so we'll probably do a run club that ends at the pop-up, I think one of those days. So we'll have to run on the on the west side because uh, it'll be in Soho. So yeah, enjoy the long weekend, get some rest, and we'll be out here next Saturday. Yeah, I mean, it started 2021. It was like a mid-COVID idea and then like as COVID was ending, just like ramped up to out of control growth. And I like had to quit my job and like, yeah, like just take the leap of faith. I remember talking to my parents. I was like, if I don't take the leap of faith now, like I don't know when it's going to come again. So let's just go for it. Yeah, yeah. And did it. And now it's like super stressful. But I mean, it's like everything I've dreamed, everything I ever dreamed of, I just always wanted to like, do my own thing for the most part. You need, you need yeah, me and Sean. For like really big drops, we bring in other people. Like the last big drop we had, my parents even wanted to come help. So they were in the warehouse with us, brought our doll, our bloodhound, and like she was like walking around the warehouse. But yeah, most most of the time we uh, we bring in outside help. But for like daily stuff, it's just Sean and I in the warehouse doing the doing the thing. It's really such a hassle. I mean, it's New York City, right? So. It's only one way to really move shit around. Sometimes you just gotta get trucks.
workout run and try to get back by like 9 a.m. to start work. And then do like whatever I have to do on the computer. And then probably head to the warehouse around like 11 or 12. Um, sometimes later, depending on how busy the morning is. Well, I print all of the orders based on like box size. So these orders are all jewelry box, which is this, six by six by two. And then next box size, which is this, is like the smaller stuff that can fit in like a 12 by nine by two. And then anything that's bigger, like a hoodie or something is 13, 13, three. Um, anything bigger than that, <clears throat> it's kind of like case by case basis. A little green envelope, jewelry box, a card, and then inside the jewelry box, just throw a little sticker. And that's, pr that's pretty much it. Pretty much make sure every jewelry order kind of gets the same thing. Every clothing order gets an envelope with like, thank you and stickers. It's still a little bit tedious, but once you get in here and start packing, it's you just gotta get into a rhythm. Yeah. Like for somebody who doesn't, like hasn't ever packed a package, it's like, where the hell is everything? But as is anything, as soon as you start getting the hang of it, kind of just becomes like second nature. Like anytime someone asks, I'll try to paint the best picture possible, but you have this weird like social mediafication of entrepreneurship and running a business. It glamorizes this. Like if you were to just type in entrepreneurship on Instagram or TikTok, I guarantee you within the first five videos that you watch some 18 year old kid, the rented Lambo, popping bottles at a club, having so much money, like all this bullshit. And like businesses can make a lot of money, yeah, but if you're young and in business and you believe in your business, why are you pulling money out of your business and coloring the growth to go get a Lamborghini and to pop bottles if you really believe that your business can be successful? Because as soon as that money comes out, now you you're you've got less to grow with so you know it's just it's so weird and it's not easy i don't know you know it's like it's just not the people that are really in the in the weeds of it will always tell you it's not easy it's the people that tell you it's easy that are trying to sell you the pickaxe for the gold rush right like sell you a course on how to make money and shit it's not it's not easy we stress every day you get employees, they're stressed on top, you know, like making sure that the business fails, then you got employees that depend on it. So that's probably the biggest misconception. Today we have our 18 mile long run, like Sunday. So the way my coach has it planned out, 6.45 average pace for the first 14. And then the last four are supposed to drop it down between like six minutes, six ten. Tom's running with us today, which I'm very thankful for because he's faster than me. So helps me pace a lot easier than doing it myself. Should be good. It's kind of hot, kind of humid, but that's just summer training in New York. What are we at now? Six forty-five. Yeah. I had 20 by 25 seconds here on Wednesday. <laughs> oh, this is steep for a hill repeat, dude. Yeah, it was brutal. That'll get your heart rate up. Yeah. Does your coach look at your heart rate? Yeah. And he's like, he's like, so what's going on back there? Yeah. I'm only 157 though, right now. I'm higher than that, bro. What are you at? Get your stats up. <laughs> 160. I think where I'll feel it is when we try to drop the pace more. Yeah. Like my thighs are already burning. So add in another set of Harlem Hills and then drop in the pace. Some mental toughness right yeah. there. Just fuck it at this point. You hit that point where you're so deep into a run, nothing else matters. You're just like, fuck. Yeah. Who cares? You're going to see the darkness either way. Yep, yep. <laughs> what 
we got Marcus another mile. Point nine. All right. All right, I'm out. Thanks, bro. You're a beast. Dig deep. Oh, dude, that was hard. Oh my God, bro. Good, bro. That was. Uh, it's just. There's only one way to get better. You gotta f find that darkness a little bit sometimes. That was one of those days where last three-ish miles just in my head the whole time, thinking about how bad my legs hurt, but just gotta dig. Oh, man. What are, what's the workout today? 10 by 600 in uh, two minutes, and then finish the 200 as our, as our like in between rest in a minute 15. So it should be pretty hard uh, just because the rest is very long. Let's see, this is a 600 meters my least favorite distance. Oh, weather's nice though. Sean and I have been training together in some facet since I was 16. Growing up, we'd play sports and we were hyper competitive against each other. Like we couldn't really play against each other just at home, like pick up shit because we'd always end up fighting. Cause like both of us just want to win so bad. It's kind of come full circle. Like in the beginning, as Marcus said, it, it was like competitive in a toxic nature where it would lead to arguments and like physical like fights. And that's never healthy. A scale of 1 to 97, how hungry are you? But then, you know, as you grow up and spend so much time competing against each other, you learn to appreciate the competitive nature of the other person, and you use that to push each other, which is what it turned into and what it, it is now. somebody you can relate to in a way that you, you don't get that bond anywhere else. Sean, final time? Or I think my dad texted us after the race, he said 440 and 447. Oh, he was tracking it? Yeah, uh, I guess. It's a really special thing and it's something that I really cherish because, you know, I know a lot of people who don't necessarily have that sort of bond in their life. One of our edges in business that you can't like buy, you can't really hire a Sean or you can't really hire me to help Sean in a way that you can just hire, like hire a random person because we've had so many years of just like doing stuff together and doing stuff competitively that now it's like our business versus everybody else. And it all comes back to like playing in the backyard growing up. I think it was a maturity thing, like just being so young in middle school and stuff. Uh, you don't really know how to channel it or really control it. And uh, yeah, it just led to a lot of bad arguments. You know, for the longest time, my mom thought Sean and I were gonna hate each other when we were older and like not be very close, but couldn't have been more wrong. It's beautiful. Oh my God, weather sucks. I'm sweating like a dog. <laughs> Did it. Check it off. Another day down. That's all that matters.